Tomer and Barak Heyman, welcome. Thank you. Very happy to have you here. So, um, Tomer, can you tell me what Gaga is? Gaga is a language. I will answer you from a, I mean, a body language and, and that dancers use it, but I want to talk about my personal um, experience with it. Yeah. Um, when I was really, really down in my life, after my German partner left me, kind of he says bye-bye, I don't want to live with you anymore. And I was really depressed and empty after it. And I didn't know what to do with myself. Basically, I even didn't want to live anymore. It was like a very bad moment That's in my really life. That's really down. Yeah, down when you lost interest about what's going on around you. Yes. Uh, Barack tried to help. I was at home. I didn't want to go out. And then I get a phone call from Mohad. Narin, because I disappeared from the set. We didn't have uh, shooting days for a long time. He said, what's going on with you? And after two, three words, by talking to him, he recognized my voice, that it was really, really in a bad uh, situation, bad shape. And he told me, what's happened? I said, I don't want to talk too much about it too hard, but I have a crisis in my life. So he asked me, very nice tumor, please go to Dugaga. I write you on the list. You don't need to pay, just come to Gaga class. And immediately I answer, no, 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 it's not for me. I, I'm, I'm, I have embarrassment to dance with other people and, and I don't like to move and I don't feel good with my body. He says, Tomer, try it. I went Monday for the first class, Tuesday to the second one. Wednesday, it was three times I went to Gaga, first, my, first time in my life. And I remember what's happened to me after three times in Gaga class. And? I went outside. And it's hard to put it in words than to share it with you. But from someone who lost interest in about this living here, and nothing changed in my personal life, but something through the Gaga connect me to the passion of life, to the idea life can be beautiful. And I walk home and I say, you know, there's still what to discover. So you got connected through your body? Completely. And my soul and my mood and, and I realized that the idea behind dancing, it's not means you need to be a professional dancer. You can be like you or like me or my brother or other people, fat and old and rich and poor. And this, it's not about the gender. It's not about nationality. It's not about skin. It's not about age. And what is it about? Barak. Ohad Narin says in the movie that the most interesting thing for him about Gaga is the, de is the demand to go beyond our uh, familial limits on a daily basis. So basically you every day have to do something or move in a way that you haven't allowed yourself to do before. This is why, for example, there are no mirrors in the studio for Had Narin, neither for the dancers, the professional ones, or the regular people, ordinary people who are doing Gaga, because it's all about being, it's about free yourself and let yourself be without thinking so much, how do I look like, am I pretty? Am so I being moving? very centered. And just to add something I think very relevant to the movie, to the people who are going to see Mr. Gaga, that you understand that it came from a very uh, bad experience from Ohad history. You know? Ohad was hurting in his he was body injured. very, very badly yeah. back in the 80s in New York when he was a dancer. And basically the doctors told him not only he cannot dance anymore, most likely he won't be able to walk anymore. He said that if someone would tell him that he will be a taxi driver, he will be so happy because no one believed he can move anymore. And he was healing himself with this uh, uh, um, body movement language that later on became to be yeah. the base of Gaga. So let's say Ohad uh, also started f from a crisis. Now when you mention it, I make the connection between, I mean, I never thought about it. I know the story from Ohad. Um, point of view that he need to be back to life. You know, he was in the top of his career when he was 30, I think around 30 in New York, and then the career looked like over and life cannot be any more the same. So he forced himself slowly. There's no magic, there's no miracle, there's no like a one day I woke up and walk. It's just how I move my hand, how I move my head, how I walk. Okay, now I have a lot of pain in my back daily, on the daily, he still have a lot of um, 
back pain. And, and now it's remind me something else that Ohad shared with me. He told me, you know, Tomer, it's, it's, it was very clear for me these two options for me. Either to be a very bitter person, you know, miserable person who have a lot of back and all my life to complain about it and to be another person in this world that's not happy about life. Or I choose a different direction and I try to find something. And this is, you know, in Gaga, in the movie, a lot about the connection between um, pleasure and, and pain. pain. Ohad was also healing himself from a very, very deep and heavy emotional crisis in his life thanks to the movement and thanks to the Gaga. And, and something that he gave himself in a way, as a present, now he feels like sharing it with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm very proud to tell you that there are many, many places around the world that now they are where they teaching practice, Gaga yeah, yeah, and where practicing they practice Gaga. Gaga. But yeah. it also came from the place that uh, through the years, many dancers hurt themselves through the shows. And of course, still these days. But statistically, if you see Bacheva Dance Company in the last 10 years, when the Gaga class took the ballet class, this, the dancer less and less have issue with their body because they learn how to protect their body. Mm -hmm. The opening scenes of, of, of Mr. Gaga, which we have a lot of issue how to open a movie like this, and you saw it, you know, this very intense mm -hmm. situation between Ohad Narin and the dancers, the female dancers, and she's falling and falling and falling, and as a viewer you feel very um, uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but he told her very nice, trust your body, that he will protect you. Mm -hmm. And he keeps on asking, eh? yeah. do it again, do it again, and trust your body. Yeah. Well, you, you made a very impressive film about uh, Ohad Naharin. And Tomer, when did you first see Ohad's work? We need to go 25 years ago. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure I'm ready because I was a different person. Mm -hmm. But if we talk about honesty, so I will put it on the table. When I was 20, which means 25 years ago, I was a stupid Israeli boy that have no idea about dance, never saw modern dance. In some way, m the reputation in my, in my mind was like, it's awful, it's boring. Can we make fun of what I thought about these two audience? It's okay. But guys, it was 25 years ago, okay? I remember when I get the offer to see Batsheva, which I never heard about them, I told myself, Tomer, you don't go there. Why? These two way of two, two way of groups are going to see modern ballet. Very old people and gays. Mm -hmm. And I was deep in the closet before I know about myself and gay. So I, I You were in the closet. Yeah, and did, I didn't even consider myself as a gay. Later on, I, I, you know what happened to my life. But so he says, no, I'm not going to see it. And it was a cousin of mine says, I give you a free ticket. There's a new guy came to town. It was 1990. And please watch it. It's called Kier Wall. So one night in Tel Aviv, I was boring. I was empty. I didn't know better what to do. I went to see a show of someone I never heard about him. This is the moment before me, Tomer Hyman, as a person. And this is who I was after 80 minutes watching this show. But what happened to you? I mean, can you describe the feeling? You know, we are in Amsterdam, so we might we, we may um, have the possibility to use this, um, this example. Um, it's like, you know what is the feeling to be drunk without drinking alcohol? You, you know what, it's, what I mean? Yeah. It's hard to go to these places with not. You mm -hmm. know what it means to be really stoned without smoking? You know how, what it means to make love without kissing? So I went there and I felt all these three elements, stone, drunks, full with love. I want to eat the world. And, and it was a moment that I, it was before words. I'm talking now, I put it in words, but it was my body felt it, that piece of art can change something very deeply about my life, your life, you know. I went outside immediately, I want to see it again, and I went again and again, and, and wow, dance that usually for me was very abstract, it's about me, mm -hmm. it's about my family, we're talking about 90, and then 92 was another show by Ohad Narin Mabul, these two women who kiss each other so strongly, and, and it's okay, 
So I saw myself in mm -hmm. this dance show and, and, and I remember this fantasy. I didn't know how had. I wish for myself one day I want to create a movie about this person. So I was like just another person mm -hmm. in the world that had fantasized and hope oh, okay. And did uh, this experience seeing Ohad's work lead to your coming out also, maybe? Interesting. Wow. Now, yes, you know, I, I, I <laughs> another story. So I start to walk <laughs> night by night to see the show of Bacheva dance. And I just remind you, two days before, I was a person that never saw any kind of dance. And then one night I follow one of the dancers and I felt very strong. And I felt, I was confused about what I feel with myself because I consider myself as a straight guy, you know, and then these stories about women all my life I heard. But emotionally, I really, really was into this dancer. And I think the combination between the show and the way I had put his dance pushed me a little bit or gave me the motivation to connect to myself deeply. And four years later, I came out to the closet to my brother, to my family. Mm -hmm. and, and so I can see the connection between something else. Seeing that. that. Yeah. Yeah. And now there is this, yeah, this beautiful documentary. Um, you became friends with Ohad. Only in the last couple of years, at the beginning, it was um, very hard to convince Ohad. By this, I think um, you also uh, jumped to the water and you heard, you know, what Ohad, why he was so against the movie. You remember this conversation? For Ohad, I think uh, ideologically, mm -hmm. there is something very deep against documenting the dance because for him, the whole meaning of dance is the fact that it is vanishing the second it's on stage. So if there is a show by Ohad Narin and it is being performed 200 or 2,000 times, every show is different. Once you put the camera on the dancers and you freeze this moment, then forever what people see is this specific mm -hmm. show. But most likely at the end of this show, Ohad told his dancers, no, you have to move a little bit different here, mm -hmm. you have to do a little bit mm -hmm. different then. So Ohad was against filming He was at very first. much very against, and more than it, when we start 2007, that was uh, June 2007, the day that we start this project, we went to Bacheva Dance Company and we asked to have archive and to see old footage of Ohad Narin, and they say, no, 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 no. This guy don't allow us and he don't want any archive and he don't want anything from the history. So Ohad Narin was very strong against the idea that um, we should do this project. And also he says, let's not talk about history and about the past. Let's talk about present and future. And he also used to say, release this film after I die. I don't want this film. And many days we came to the shooting yeah. with the crew, you know, the cameraman and the sound man, sometimes the lightning and Tomer and me and the researcher and producer and everybody. And we set up a shooting day. And then after 10, 15 minutes, he takes his microphone away and he say, go home. I don't feel comfortable. I need my privacy. I need my intimacy with my dancers. After a few days like this, we told him, oh, Had, we cannot make a film like this. And he said, no problem. So don't make a film like this. Forget about it. But he's used to be the director of the Bacheva Dance this Company. This is the thing. You are the directors of this film. Did he try to take over sometimes? No, no, he never. He was like, he asked, um, he was, he once told me, you know, before you release the movie, can I see the dance footage? Because, you know, all my career is about dance. And I say, yeah, the door is open. But for the story, it will be my choice to tell your story. And honestly, he says he really appreciates the movie right now. And I think he, 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 he went through something deep once he saw the movie in Israel. But he told me this, Tomer, this is your choice. I will tell a different story about mm -hmm. myself. But how did you convince him filming the dance? I think um, by being there so many hours and so many moments. So in a certain point was a turning um, moment that I think all of us felt that we are there, but almost not exist in the studio. 
so we don't harm and we don't destroy the authentic process of the creation that he care about putting into the dance. Mm -hmm. And I think one good example, if you see the last um, scenes from the movie, which about, you know, his daughters and his lover and mm -hmm. Adna Rim, you see how strong an intimi intimacy moment and how we are still there, the camera standing here, moving to Adna Rim face. So it show you that after a while, everyone get used to us. Mm -hmm. But it's not only about this. I think as you saw by yourself in the film, Ohad went all the way in his life with himself, with his art, and he was fighting, you know, he was like young in his early 20s in New York, being a dancer in Martha Graham, and because he was not satisfied, he left it, and he has to be very, very brave and very strong in order to build himself from nowhere. So I think he admired the fact that Tomer, in mm -hmm. some ways, is similar to him, goes all the Go way with it. his obsession, with his passion to make this film and never gave up, year after year after year after year. So I think Tomer's passion and our passion, together with all the great people who worked on this film, mm -hmm. it also did something mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. Well, those people don't come to make just a documentary in two months. We worked very hard on it and I think it also meant a lot to him, so how much we care about yeah. it. So you got tested also in how, much, in how much you wanted it. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and was another turning point, now when you mention it, I think it's, it's relevant to talk about the moment we stole or we took which is a funny story, but behind it is something more seriously. You know, once we met the mother of Oad Narin, she's mm -hmm. still alive, she's now almost 90. Mm -hmm. And she, of course, influenced his life very strongly. And we have a very, 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 very long interview with the mother of Oad Narin, Sophia Narin. In the movie, you have just uh, two minutes. At the end of this interview, she says, Tomer, I need your help. Camera was off, I say, what do you want now? She says, Tomer. I know that in the private house of Oad Narin, in the basement or somewhere, you have a lot of old footage from the time Ohad growing up in the kibbutz, in the early days of Israel, a young boy. He have it. He never bring it back to us. There is a beautiful collection of footage. There is something she didn't remember. She says, I remember that we were, we were shooting him with this old 8 millimeter camera. We're talking about 50 years ago, maybe 60, 40. Tomer, he refused to share it and to bring it back. So, but then you knew the material was there. I, I had a, an instinct that even Ohad, the day before, told me I throw everything. I don't have, it's not anymore with me because I'm against have um, the history of my work. I, it, it's, it's a feeling. I say, no, 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 no. He's not lying, but he's not sharing the whole truth. So one night, it was midnight. I remember, Saturday midnight. It was a few days after his baby. You, you remember this moment? I got a text message from Tomer, midnight, come right away to Ohad house and bring a big van with you. <laughs> How comes I find a big van in the middle of the night in Tel Aviv, you know? Don't ask questions. It's, Make it it's, happen. it's a dramatic yeah. moment. Believe me, you will not regret it. Find a van and come right away. Took me 20 minutes. I was there finding Tomer, preaching Ohad like a crazy man. Get rid of your past, Ohad. Get rid of your past. Leave this the is, history behind you. Yes. And then Ohad is like, oh my God, those people are pain in my butt. No, Just no, no, leave no, me no, alone. I, no, no, no. Why not? He was standing there. <laughs> very tired with, with underwear and a t-shirt. And he was very emotional because in the age of almost 58, a daughter came to his life. Yeah. Just to remind you, we mm -hmm. were not in the top of his mind. He mm -hmm. became to be a father. He became a father. Became a father first time in his life. So we hear the voice of a young daughter, the wife, and I told him, please, I cannot make this movie without perspective. I cannot and I don't want to make this Mr. Gaga, this project, this film, without history, without connection, without what's happened before you came to Batsheva. So, but you, uh, you asked him, can I have the footage? I, 
I was brave or I don't know what, I, maybe I was, was even rude a little bit. I don't know, I start to walk home because that was the moment I know he's home and we were friends. And, and he says, Tomer, it's on the basement. I, w I won't share everything, but what I can share with you, I didn't go to this basement, Ohad Narin told me, because it's connected for me to something very heavy and something connect to the woman I share my life with for many years and she's not here anymore. She died? She died. You can go there. I ask Ohad, are you sure about it? Because if I go there, I want to take it with me. He says, Tomer, it's yours. And that's the reason I say he talked very nice. He says, you know, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe I need to send to be free from my history and to let you to do whatever you want with it. So it was about timing. It was the right moment to ask. Right moment, and this is a key for the movie. It was a moment of the most important. Um, um, it was about trust. Yes. What was and the biggest treasure you found in there? Uh, for myself, I can say that it was the first time I saw Ohad as a dancer, not only as a choreographer, a beautiful, young, 20 years mm -hmm. old man dancing and looks like a extremely, Greek god. Yeah. Amazing gracious. how he moved yes. his body. For, for me, it was the moment, you have to understand, it, because it was so old, it was not that the day after we can watch it. We send it to Australia and London and Holland to develop it because it took time. So Ohad didn't know what he gave us. We are the one that hold it and by some ways we have something about Ohad that Ohad either deny it or forget about it or don't want to open anymore. Why I mention it? Because for me the moment once, I don't remember from which country he got it, the image of the dance that Ohad Narin and his wife, that she died, Mari, 84, in New York, doing um, a piece that called 60 a Minute. And they uh, have a beautiful duet as a young couple, man and a woman. And the end of it, when they dancing with guitar and piano, they doing the circles, Ohad push her on the piano and go up above the piano and you just hear the sound of the last piano. We use it in the movie. That's our way to say bye-bye to this woman. Mm -hmm. But when I saw it, I felt this story that need to be told about Mari. And I think you, I, you were the first person I came to and I told Barack, you know, Mari for me is not a legend because maybe later on you can say what's a dancer from New York. I met her and I had the privilege to know her and to see how she was important and how she influenced and was inspiration. Unfortunately, we have to finish, but... Um, I, I need to ask you a personal question. What for you was, the, like, why, what you took from the movie, or what, what if, if it's okay to ask you? What I you think you edit the film as if it was a piece of dance. I think Beautiful. you really succeeded. So he's a choreographer, actually. That's it, Tomar. <laughs> You're a, choreo uh, a choreographer. And Barak, what is your role? I, my role was to make sure that you see more female dancers than you see male dancers. We what? had a lot of fight about we it. Had in a lot of fight about it. One, I, we need to close, but <laughs> we need to close. An, a good thing in the movie connect to Holland and to the NDT. Yeah. The two male dancers who is dancing together is, is with the Indian song, and you know, I'd say it's not about male or female. It's a two beautiful dancer from here working in the NDT. So it's the main, one of the most beautiful things connect for me to Holland. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.